the very best guy. His name's Emir. And the greatest driver. Whoa, it's Nick. They're the best. I love them. Even though Emir oh. owes me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. And that's right. Thank you, Jimmy. Safety rules. First, if you need guest assistance or have a medical emergency, or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or you have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red e-cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated, keeping your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use that red cord above your head if you need any assistance. The studio is private property. If at any time during the tour you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the cord and remain seated. Please, no smoking of any kind during the tour. Be prepared, our tour today features loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. You'll want to have your cameras out for some great photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. And finally, for your safety and safety of those around you, please do not use selfie sticks when you were on board. Alrighty, folks, we've done it. We've left the theme park behind. We're now heading out of the heart of the production area here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Now, as we make our way down this hill, we, we call this our timeline, all right? Look to your left, look to your right, see if you can find the poster for your favorite Universal movie. Now, if you can't find it, that makes sense. These posters here, they only represent a tiny fraction of the over, like, 10,000 movies that Universal Studios has produced throughout its years. Most important day in our student history, we're gonna go back to March 15th, 1915. That's when our founder, Mr. Carl Emley, opened the gates of Universal Studios to the public. 108 years. 108 years we've been making movies here. But today, not just movies, we also make TV shows, music videos, and commercials right here near Procedures Hollywood. Now, we make a lot of those things inside of buildings that are called sound stages. A sound stage is basically a giant warehouse with really thick concrete walls that have been insulated and padded to make up about 98% soundproof. We use sound stages because it gives filmmakers a nice enclosed environment where they can control the weather, the temperature, the lighting, and the sound. Like right now, it's daytime outside, but on the inside of the soundstage, we can set it up to look like it's nighttime, or vice versa. We got 36 soundstages in total, we just added a whole bunch of new ones because we've never been busier. With the new streaming services that are all available to us at home, so many shows have been filming here year round. We got 36 soundstages in total, you're going to see a bunch on our tour today. We're about to pass really close to about five of them, coming up on the left hand side of the tram. This is where I'm going to check oh, wait, to see look. if they're doing any active filming, I'll be right back. We're in Nintendo World. At the moment, it does not look like it. Okay, so a couple of things I want to point out on the left. You notice these big, giant doors in front of the sound stages, right? Those doors are large, and that way they can accommodate any kind of set pieces or equipment that you move in or out of them. And some of the doors are currently open, so as we drive by, wave hello to the crew. They're great, the folks working behind the scenes to make a TV show happen. Now, the doors even have a name. Yeah, they're called elephant doors. <laughs> yeah, elephant doors. I'll explain why in a little bit, all right? So hold on to that information. These sounds they did the left that we're driving past. They're home to TV shows like Grand Crew, great show on NBC, and also home to TV shows like Bel Air, the dramatic retelling of the 90s and off The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. In fact, I've got a video with two of the stars of that show, Jamar Banks and Alice Charlton, and they're going to tell us how they use these sounds they just left for their show. Can you just grab me water when you get so what is you put egg on on the cheese. You put cheese on the eggs, on the cheese, and it's wrong. Whoa, how many seats do you think are in there? No, it's got to be a lot. Yeah. We could probably fit the whole Bel Air cast and crew in there. You know, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> for sure. Yo, lucky for y'all, the Banks family mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jamar, what have been your most memorable moments? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I love the four year set when Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh. The Bel Air Academy gym set is here too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was really fun. <laughs> I still can't feel my toes. <laughs> no, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talented crew. We put it all together from hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Transmo, yes. Yo, know, Transmo is the best. Yeah, they have the sweetest rides for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're gonna get a ride like this, we better go talk to Transpo now and let these people get back on the tour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I get to drive. Oh, not if I've got the keys. Oh, not for long. Oh, Come on, man. That's Jabari Banks and Ollie Shaw's head stars of the TV show Bel Air, letting us know that a lot of the locations that they use in that show aren't real locations. The Bel Air Mansion, Bel Air Academy, not real places. They're just sets that have been built inside of a soundstage. Yeah, for the most part, anytime you see a character on screen inside of a building, a house, a restaurant, a store, a theater, that's typically a set that's been built inside one of these sound stages. 
Alrighty, folks, let's see who's paying attention, all right? Shout it out if you know the answer. You don't need, like, a razor hand or anything. What did I call the big giant doors in front of the sound stages? Elephant doors. Oh, the door. So here's how they got that name. At one point in our studio history, we actually had a zoo right near Universal Studios. We had over 30 lions, a whole bunch of birds and monkeys, and we even had over 10 elephants here. We used to use a lot of live animals in our movies, so we needed to make sure that the doors were big enough to fit an elephant through them. And that's how those doors got their names, elephant doors. Now, before you can assemble a cast and crew, though, inside of a soundstage for filming or what we call production, there's a really important phase that comes before it, and that's called pre-production. Pre-production involves things like writing a script, making a budget, casting a show. A lot of that work happens on the left here at Universal. These are the offices for some of Hollywood's top writers, directors, and producers. Big names like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He has offices on the left for his company, Seven Months Productions. They bring us into a TV show, Young Rock at NBC. Jordan Peele has offices here as well for his company, Monkey Pop Productions. And they produce movies like Get Out, Us, Candyman, and Nope. No one left Pass by South Stage 25, home run TV show, Lopez vs. Lopez. Yeah, George Lopez back on TV again, this time with his daughter, Maya Lopez. Now, if you've always wanted to see a celebrity in person, or you want to see how a TV show gets made, get tickets to be a studio audience member for a live TV of Lopez vs. Lopez. They film their show in front of a live studio audience, and you can get tickets for free online. Another show that does that here as well is The Kelly Clarkson Show, her daytime talk show, films here inside of Stage 1, and sometimes she gives away free stuff to the audience as well. Find me after the tour, I'll tell you what website you can go to to get free tickets. Alrighty folks, now if you look to the right, we're coming to my favorite part of the tour. This is the back lot. This is where we get to shoot exterior shots in a grand scale. So sometimes you can see characters walking down a busy city street with cars driving up and down the road, or you can see them walking into or out of a big physical building. Well, this is where you can film that here at Universal. We've got an entire city of buildings that look like restaurants, stores, banks, theaters, offices, apartments, all squashed into four acres of land. Across the street, that's called Brownstone Street, all those apartments, you might recognize it from the scene on your screen. Grace the dog! I'm in the shower! Here we go, there's Jim Carrey from the movie Bruce Almighty leaving a set on inside of a soundstage and then walking down on a Brownstone Street, which is on the right-hand side of the tram. Alrighty, folks, now you might feel like our tram is about to hit 88 miles an hour because we're about to get 1.21 gigawatts and head back to the future to hell that. People, I told you if we were loud enough for Nick, he was going to get us some extra special behind the scenes access. It is happening right now. Not everybody can see this, but because Nick is our driver, we do. Everybody, welcome to Courthouse Square, but you'll recognize this is the town of Hill Valley from Back to the Future Part 1 and Part 2. On the left, that is a clock tower that's on your screens. Now, it looks a little bit different, and here's why. Once the movie Back to the Future came out in theaters and was so popular, people recognized what that building looked like, right? It played a very important part of the film. Here's the thing, this is a, move, a set for movies and TV shows that other people can come through and use. People were doing it, using this area, and when they would go air on broadcast, people would recognize the clock tower in the background. So we had to give it a little bit of a disguise. That city hall you see on the left, not a real building. The minute you walk right through the front doors of that city hall, you'll actually see the original pillars of the clock tower right behind there. Alrighty, people, well, we are gonna make like a tree and get out of here. That's for my uh, Back to the Future fans. <laughs> we're going to leave the quaint little town of Hill Valley behind, and we're going to head to the big city. Let's get Jimmy Fallon up here to tell us a little bit more about the street about to drive on. Hey, everyone. Welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. I always got mugged over there. An old woman. Oh. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. It's cool, guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. That's right. Thanks, Jimmy. So many different things have been made right here on New York Street. But if you're here watching American Ninja Warrior, this is where they built that entire obstacle course when they filmed episodes here. In fact, that obstacle course was just here about a month ago. They just filmed a bunch of episodes for the upcoming season. But not just for TV shows as well. Music videos. A lot of different music videos have been filmed back here. Billie Eilish was back here in 2021 for an Amazon Prime Day special, Un Jeune à Paris. That music video... Looks, it's like a 36 minute long video that looks like it's filmed in the city of Paris. What's well, not? That entire thing was filmed right here. And then most recently, G Sue from the K pop band Blackpink, her music video for the song Flowers, filmed right here on New York Street as well. All right, here's one more fun thing about these buildings they look real, right? They look like they're made out of brick and concrete. They're not. 
They're made entirely out of painted plywood and plaster. Yeah, no reason to build a building out of real materials when it might need to get redone or destroyed for a movie or a TV show. Alrighty, people, we're leaving the big city behind. Let's get to the jungle. Here's Academy Award winning director Peter Jackson letting us know where we're going to next. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old, and I wanted to become a filmmaker. That's right, people. We're about to head back to Skull Island to go see King Kong. But before we do anything, quick reminder again to please remain seated throughout the entire tour. And please hold on tight to your valuables. I don't want anybody dropping their phones or their cameras at Skull Island, all right? Actually, speaking of your phones and your cameras, if you take pictures or record video of what's coming up next, totally fine. Just do me a favor and make sure you keep the flash off, all right? That bright light can be really disruptive to people traveling in the same car as you. And it is a safety hazard here in the front car. If you don't know how to turn off the flash in your camera, just hand your phone to the nearest child. I guarantee they can turn it off in like two seconds. Alrighty, people, if you're ready to go see King Kong, make some noise! Actually, speaking of 3D, let's talk about how 3D works. Okay, now if any of you happen to take your 3D glasses off during King Kong, you probably thought you had terrible eyesight, because you were looking at a double blurry image, right? Well, that's on purpose. In a 3D movie, there are multiple projectors showing what looks like the same image you're seeing, but they've been filmed or animated from slightly different angles. Now, the 3D glasses that we use, they have polarized lenses. A polarized lens filters out certain types of light. And because a movie is just light being projected onto a screen, well, what these do is that one of the lenses allows one of your eyes to only see one of the angles. The other lens allows your other eye to see that other angle. 
That way, when he got the glasses on, you're breaking the process, the two angles together, to then make it look like that you're popping off the screen at your face. 3D. All right, friends, well, we are going to shift gears a little bit, and we're not going to talk about cars, but not just any kind of cars, picture cars. A picture car is any vehicle that shows up on screen in a movie or a TV show. Sometimes picture cars become just as famous as the actors who drive them. I'm sure all of you right now can think of at least one vehicle that you've seen on screen that's, that's really stuck Back in Back to right? the future. But well, folks, get your cameras ready, because coming up on the left-hand side of the tram, we're about to pass by a wonderful collection of picture cars. Now, because we've got so many, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but some of my favorites, all right? Now, if you're my age, you might have grown up watching Magnum P.I., well, we've got Tom Selleck's Ferrari here on the left-hand side of the tram. Although it turns out that Magnum drove a bootleg, and that's a fiberglass Ferrari shell on top of the dune buggy chassis powered by a Volkswagen engine. Yeah, a Volkswagen engine going to be a little bit cheaper to maintain on set instead of a real Ferrari engine. We have some of these fun foot-powered vehicles from the Flintstones, very fuel-efficient. Although, you know what, I have been told that those cars won't run unless you do. Harry Potter fans went to the Ford Anglias used in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. No, they actually used 17 and a half different Ford Anglias. Yeah, you heard me right, half. They literally sawed one of those cars in half. They had close-up shots of Rupert Grant and Dana Radcliffe. Now, dinosaur fans, we have one of the gyrospheres from Jurassic World coming up. Anybody here in my front car notice what's missing from that Jurassic World gyrosphere? Yeah, I heard people say it, the glass sphere around the outside. Now, a lot of people want to, people want to know what happened to the glass. Did it break? But in reality, a lot of the gyrospheres that you saw on screen in Jurassic World actually never had glass around them. Yeah, that's because glass is really reflective, and when you film with it, you might end up seeing the reflection of the camera or the crew in that glass. So the next time you watch Jurassic World, know that a lot of the glass you see around those gyrospheres, it's not really there. It was added in post-production by a visual effects artist. What you're really looking at is CGI, or Computer Generated Imagery Digital Glass. Now coming up on the right hand side of the tram, we're about to pass by a replica of JP29, the same car that John Hammond drove in the movie Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Now we're passing that view. Oh. Alrighty, folks. Hey, somebody just pulled the emergency cord. If this is a medical emergency, go ahead and pull that cord one more time. All right, it's not. I'm guessing it's a dropped item. So just do me a favor, raise your hand so I know which car to go back to. In the meantime, check out this trailer for the TV show That's My Jam. Oh, damn. Oh, that phone fell. Alrighty, folks. <laughs> We're back. Hell? So, like I was saying, we are now taking this tram back up the coast of Costa Rica to Isla Nublar. We're about to drive through some of the sets and picture cars used in the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Alrighty. Alrighty, folks. If you're a big fan of Jurassic Park trilogy, coming up on the right, you can see a long silver boat. That was a boat used in the movie Jurassic Park 3. That's the one that Dr. Alan Grant, played by Sam Neill, rode up and down the river in, along with the Kirby family while they were looking for their son. Kirby family is played by Tia Leone and William H. Macy. On the left, we got this long camouflage vehicle, and that's the mobile lab from the movie The Lost World Jurassic Park. Now look at this thing. It looks like it's made out of metal, right? On the left, it's not. It's made entirely out of wood. Yeah, as we drive past it, turn your head over your left shoulder and look at all the rotting plywood on the back. Now we've got a special treat. We've got some dinosaurs here for the movie. You want to say hi? Here we go. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
Car two, your turn. Car three, they want to say hi to you as well. Oh, wow. Oh. Everybody, I am so sorry. I just realized I never warned you about this. Ooh. Um, my bad. Uh, I was just talking now. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, if you're sitting in a seat that's colored blue, no. you might get wet on the tour today. Oh, thank you. Yes, they're all blue. You're all going to get wet at some point on the tour today. <laughs> now, speaking of getting wet, if you notice in the Jurassic Park movies, whenever a dinosaur is attacking, it always seems to be raining, right? Why? Well, rain can be a great way to enhance the mood of a scene and make it more scary. It even works in literature. When you're reading a book and it starts off with, it was a dark and stormy night. You know some terrible things are about to happen. Well, rain and weather effects can play the same kind of role in a movie or a TV show. Like, here's the uh, thing. How do you make it rain here in Hollywood when it's nearly oh sunny? My God. We're actually going to show you right here in the old Mexico area of the back. To the left, we got some lightning coming from strobe lights and some thunder playing from speakers that are in the area. But normally in a movie, the thunder gets added in post-production by somebody called a Foley artist. This is great, but you know we really need to sell the effect? Rain. Now the rain is coming from sprinklers that are called rain rings or rain bars. Now these can be adjusted to make it look like a light misting all the way to a heavy downpour. Now rain is actually really difficult to capture on camera. It's kind of like when you're watching a football game at home on your TV and the announcer saying it's raining, but we can never see the raindrops, right? Well, that's because they're raining about that light. To make raindrops appear on camera, you gotta put a light source from behind the raindrops to make them shimmer and shine, and that will show up on camera. Oh, sorry everybody. Hey yo, Mikey, you can turn off the water, man. When you keep it running this long, everything overflows. Sorry folks, Mike's new. He doesn't really realize that when we keep it on this uh -oh. lot, everything is flowing. Oh, no, not again. If you're in a blue seat, look out. Big Fat Liar. Now, as we drive through Old Mexico, you might recognize these buildings if you're a Trekkie. The TV show Picard on Paramount Plus used this as a planet Vashti. Or maybe you're a big fan of Jack Black. If you love the movie Nacho Libre, you film right here as well. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, well, we're going to say adios to Old Mexico now. Say howdy to Six Points, our western area. These streets have been used by some big stars like Mae West and W.C. Fields for the movie My Little Chickadee. Jimmy Stewart filmed the Western back here. And a few summers ago, we even had Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Quentin Tarantino right here filming the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, okay, now check this out. On the right, see this building that says Hotel Lobby? Notice how the doors are all a bunch of different sizes, right? Some of them are really big, and some of them are a little bit smaller. So that's for a thing called forced perspective. We've had plenty of cop boys back here who were well over six feet tall, like John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart. But a couple of times we cast cowboys named Audie Murphy. He's about five foot five. And it turned out that his damsel in distress that he's supposed to rescue was a lot taller and bigger than him. So to fix that on camera, we make that shorter cowboy stand inside some of the smaller doorways. That way it gave the optic illusion that he was taller and bigger than he was in real life. And then we make his leading lady stand inside some of those bigger doorways to make them appear shorter than her cowboy counterparts. Forced perspective. Alrighty, folks, we're going to ride off into the sunset and leave six points behind. This town ain't big enough for all 170 of us. If you look to your left, you can see sound pages 30 through 33. That's where we're currently from the TV show, The Voice. Hey, what's up, studio tour? I'm Kelly Clarkson from The Voice, and we shoot our show right here in stage 31. One of the newest stages on the lot, actually. We stage the art sound stages allow us to bring our show to life from the blinds to the lives and everything in between. That's right, folks. Season 23 of The Voice currently on the air right now with two new coaches, Niall Horan from One Direction and Chance the Rapper. You can find The Voice on Monday nights on NBC. What's so great about being here at Universal Studios? I mean, so many great things were filmed there. 
And so much great history has happened here, too. If you're a big fan of scary movies or monster movies, you can actually thank Universal Studios for creating that genre of film. Between the 1920s and the 1950s, we made movies based off of characters like Frankenstein, starring Boris Karloff, Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi, and friends, we are now dragged through the area that some of those historic movies were made. But I'm going to guess a lot of you might recognize this area as the good place. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Come on. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never, ever seen this. You're in the good place. That's right, everybody. You're in the actual good place. All four seasons of that great TV show filmed right here. Hey, do I have any fans of the good place on my tour today? All right, I see some hands. Let's talk about it. So the yogurt shop that's on your screens, that's actually the building directly in front of the tram. It's one of the double blue doors and the maroon trim. That disgusting clam chowder fountain that Eleanor hated, you'll see it right before the yogurt shop where those folks are standing. It's the fountain with the blue tile back there. And the train station for neighborhood 12358W that gave Eleanor and Chidi a ride at the medium place, also coming up on the left hand side of the tram. Y'all, I love The Good Place. Legitimately, one of my favorite television shows ever created. Now, if you've never seen an episode of The Good Place, get basic. That's for my Good Place fans. Now, if you don't get that reference, watch the show. It's incredible. All four seasons are currently available on Netflix, and, and the cast of Kristen Bell, William Jackson Harper, Darcy Carden, Manny Jacinto, Jamila Jamila, Ted Danson were incredible together. And the show itself was created by Michael Schur. Now, Michael Schur has been behind some of your favorite NBC comedies. If you're a big fan of the TV show The Office, well, Michael Schur was a writer and a producer on that show. He then went on to create TV shows like Parks and Recreation and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So if you like any of the shows I just mentioned, I guarantee you'll also love The Good Place. Alrighty, folks, well, I do want to let y'all know now we're about, like, halfway through the tour. A reminder that the studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the cord, remain seated, then I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. But again, please remain seated throughout the entire tour. Now, on the left-hand side of the channel, we've got this great house over here. If anybody is currently watching Bel Air on Peacock, that is actually the influencer house where Hillary actually lives for a little bit. And then as we... Oh, wait, we're turning? What's going on? Oh, oh What? <laughs> okay, everybody, remember when I said if we were loud enough for Nick, he was going to get some extra special behind-the-scenes access? It is happening again. He's gotten access to Soundstage 50. This is a unique soundstage here in Hollywood. It's the only two-floor soundstage, all right? On the second floor above our heads is an entire city scene. There's buildings. There's even a gasoline truck parked above our heads. Now, these two floors are connected by a set of stairs on the right. Upstairs, it's a subway station entrance. An actor can go through it, a camera can follow behind them, and be here in our subway station set. Now, we'll be swimming in here next week, and it looks like they've decorated to look like a subway station. Oh, okay, from like the 1980s, we got some cave holes on the walls. And, oh, you can tell what city this movie's going to take place in. San Francisco. Oh, what the... Right? You can tell that from the signs hanging from the ceilings, Golden Gate Park, and also the signs that are on the walls. We've got, welcome to San Francisco. Oh. Okay, uh, hey, sorry about that. Look, we get tremors off this all the time in LA. Oh. Earthquake, the big one. 
you just experienced a simulated 8.3 magnitude earthquake on the Richter scale. The TV show Bones, they actually use an entire effect of the episode Bones on the Blue Line. Take a look. Well, folks, I don't know about you, but that earthquake left me feeling a little too shaken up. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is take a nice little beach vacation in an area called Amity Island. Yeah, I love Amity Island. It's such a lovely harbor town. The waters are so beautiful and clear. You can go swimming in them. They've got a cool community of fishermen. I mean, look at those waters. They look so great. Let's go for a swim. Right Whoa. Oh. 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 No, 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 no. I am so sorry, everybody. That is actually old footage of Amity Island. <laughs> I ignore that. Yes, at one point there was a shark problem, but it's been taken care of. We caught him. The waters are so shark free that my best friend George is in the water right now going for a swim and oh no, there's another shark and George is still in the water. Friend, I need your help. And I count of three, shout George. One, two, three. George! Thank you, George. There's a shark in the water. He's coming right for you. George, are you okay? Oh, George is fighting the shark. Yeah, fight him off, George, fight him off. George, show us what you're made of. Oh. Oh, that, that's not what I meant. Uh-oh, okay. Ooh. Alrighty, folks, we've got a plan. We're going to pull forward and we're going to hide behind... Oh, yeah, I better pull. ...the super safe barrels of gasoline. Oh. All right, there's a bunch of food in that barrel over there. If the shark takes it, we should be safe. Okay, he's taking the barrel. And the dock. And the gas pump is loose. All right, this is not good. Everybody, look at it! Shout out what kind of shark that was. Y'all got it? Here we go. One, two, three. Plastic. <laughs> and that mechanical shark was added to the Cedar Tour all the way back in 1976, a year after the movie Jaws came out in theaters. Now, the mechanical shark that you just saw, ours here at the theme park, works all of the time. But the mechanical shark used in the movie Jaws, not so much. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrated. It, it didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio mics. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited and waited. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough for a while there and it's going to why we always a lot. Yeah, so the story goes that the shark was built here on the West Coast, had a bunch of fancy electronics and mechanics, and it worked great. So they flew down to the East Coast where the movie Jaws was being made. They dropped it into the Atlantic Ocean. And you know what does not work very well with electronics and mechanics? Salt water. Yeah, that shark failed the left, did right. And in fact, the first time that they put it in the ocean, it sunk to the bottom of the ocean floor. The mechanical shark that they used delayed production on the movie Jaws by quite a few months. And the cast and the crew of the movie Jaws gave the movie a nickname. They nicknamed the movie Flaws. But thankfully, due to some amazing direction by Steven Spielberg, some great performances by the cast, and some amazing editing by Verna Field, the editor of the movie Jaws, she was amazing. She took the fact that they barely had any footage of the shark working, and she used it to her advantage. She barely showed it, creating this sense of tension. Because today, when you watch a scary movie, isn't it always scarier to never see the monster that's chasing after everybody? But you can thank Verna Fields for creating that whole idea with the way she edited the movie Jaws. All right, so coming up on the left-hand side of the tram, we're passing by a street called Colonial Street, and we don't get to drive up it today because the TV show Ted... Ted's going to be a prequel to the Ted movies. It's going to be coming out of Peacock. They just filmed an episode there. And so they're still striking their production or tearing down their stuff. Now, that is probably one of the most photographed streets in the entire world. In the 1980s, you saw the movie The Burbs during Tom Hanks. In the 1990s, Christina Ricci was back there for the movie Casper. In the 2000s, Nelly and Kelly Rowland filmed the music video for Dilemma back there. But a lot of you are going to recognize it from the folks on your screen. <laughs> Terry Hatcher, Marsha Cross, Eva Longoria, Nicola Sheridan, the cast of ABC's Desperate Housewives, and use that street as Wisteria Lane. Now, right now on TV, if anybody's watching Never Have I Ever, 
Davey's house is actually on that street. All right, folks, well, I want to let you all know now, we're about like 15 minutes away from the end of the tour. We're going to be returning to the theme park shortly. A reminder again to please remain seated. If you do need assistance, pull the board to get my attention. Well, friends, earlier on the tour, we passed by those picture cars, right? And some of my Fast and Furious fans were probably furious that we only had Brian's Nissan Skyline there. Well, friends, get your cameras out, because it's about time for us to go see some family. That's right, people. We got a whole other set of picture cars coming in on the right-hand side of the tram. We got a couple of vehicles that are more than meets the eye to kick it off. Bumble Bee and Barricade for the Transformers. But after that, <laughs> Dominic Trittles, Black Dodge Charger, and the back, the orange Chevy truck that Sun Kang, who played Han, used at a gasoline heist. We got Roman Pierce's purple Mitsubishi Eclipse and the orange Julius car seen in the movie Too Fast, Too Furious. And y'all, we even have the Plymouth Roadrunner that Dominic Trudeau used to play a crazy game of chicken against Deckard Shaw in Furious 7. <laughs> all, oh, all the way. It was a terrible idea for Dominic Toretto and the crew to take up the entire parking lot for this motel next door. Yeah, folks, because I've heard that the owner and operator of the Bates Motel, I hear he's kind of a psycho. Oh. Alrighty, friends, to the right-hand side of the tram, we are now driving past the Bates Motel. Now, even though there are 12 rooms and 12 vacancies, we are not stopping to check in, because I read a bunch of reviews that said that the showers there were terrible. Instead, we're going to make our way up this road towards the original Psycho House. I like to call this road our Psycho Path. Now, legend has it, you can still see Mother rocking in her chair at the second floor window of the house. Let me know if you can see her, too. Now, the house on the left, this is the original Psycho House from the movie Psycho. It was built to a two-thirds scale, meaning it's all the correct dimensions of a house, but everything's a third smaller. They did that to make Norman Bates look larger and more imposing on screen. All right, folks, second floor window. You see Mother up there rocking in her chair. Well, friends, as we drive past one of the most iconic sets here in Hollywood, the Bates Motel, or not the Bates Motel, but the Psycho House, <laughs> prepare yourselves for one of the most impressive sets ever built. Alrighty, people, today on the tour, I've shown you a bunch of stuff that was not real. I showed you brick buildings that were made out of plaster. I showed you cars that were made out of wood. Well, the plane that's surrounded the tram right now, this is a real Boeing 747 that was purchased and then chopped into pieces for the movie War of the Worlds. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. So again, we sit down to talk about the war of the world. I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. Well, you're doing good. Keep your eyes on me. That's me. Now listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Now I'm closed. <laughs> Robbie, get in. Uh, War of the World, great movie starring Tom Cruise, Dakota Fanning, directed by Steven Spielberg. You know, we've been so lucky here at Universal Studios to be able to work with some generation-defining directors. That continues with us being able to work with Jordan Peele. Folks, we're about to be driving through the set of Jupiter's Claim from Jordan Peele's movie, Nope. The actual set that actors Dan Kalia, Kiki Palmer, and Steven Young worked on. Let's get writer, director, actor, producer, Emmy Award, and Academy Award winner Jordan Peele up here to tell us a little bit more about Jupiter's Claim. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Claim, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie, Kid Sheriff. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Oh, it's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of a gold rush frontier town, lies a sinister secret. 
It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. Welcome to the world of no. I think it's time for us to get out. Everybody, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Better turn the key and peel on out of here. There we go. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Enough of that. All right, everybody, you've been so great listening to me just talk at you about movies for the past 45 minutes. We are going to switch it up, all right? But before I tell you what we're about to do, quick reminder again to please remain seated throughout the entire tour and make sure to hold on tight to your valuables, all right? Because things are about to get a little bit. Fast and Furious. Congrats, everybody. You've been cast in the next installment of the Fast and Furious franchise. That's right. You're getting a big break here in Hollywood. Do not waste this shot. All right, here's what's going on. Turns out one of you is an undercover witness for the government, and you've got some dirt on criminal Owen Shaw. I've just gotten the word that it's a birthday boy who's 12 years old today named Dylan in the second car, so we need to protect Dylan at all costs. We are now pulling into Sullivan's Garage, which is really the secret hideout for Donnick to run his crew. They're going to take care of us, all right? Here we go, folks. Places and action. My name is Roman Pierce. Pleased to meet you. Our buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you from Shaw for a while. So we brought you in our secret spot. All right, look, guys. We're going to keep Shaw from finding you. But to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here. So put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone could give us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Okay, pull into the next bay and we'll meet you in there. And cut! Amazing work, everybody. All right, we got that scene in one take. We're now going to do a company move to the next location. This next scene is a party scene, all right? This is a live feed of the dancers we've already hired. So what I need you to do, once you see them, that's action on you, all right? I need you to blend in and show me your best dance moves in your seats. Ready? Here we go. said they want you to use your 3D glasses for this next scene. So go ahead and put those on now. 
All right, so this next scene is actually going to be the car chase stunt sequence. The setup is that we're pulling to this parking garage. We're trying to protect Dylan from Owen Shaw, but Owen Shaw is going to find us in a crazy car chase. It's going to ensue through the streets and highways of LA. All right, y'all ready for it? Here we go. Places on Dominic Toretto, places on Owen Shaw, and places on the tram. Action. Which one of you is the witness? Speak now or you all get fried. This is our time. But this family is now riding back to the theme park because our tour has just come to an end. Everybody, thank you so much for hopping aboard the world famous Universal Studios tour. You were a great group of people to give a tour to. As we're making our way back to the theme park, will you join me in making a whole bunch of noise for our amazing driver, Nick? Nick! And also, please shout out to Randy the Passover. Thanks so much for joining us again. If you're not an annual pass holder, you want to become one at the Universal Box Office to find out how you can turn today's ticket into an annual pass. If you want to buy any of the NBC Universal shows or movies we talked about on the tour today, go to the website, uphe.com. And finally, download the Universal Studios Hollywood app to your phone. That way you can see that we close tonight at 8 p.m. and also get details on how to visit Super Nintendo World. Alrighty, folks. Well, my name is Emir. I was your tour guide. There we go. And in case it wasn't abundantly clear, I'm also an actor, which means that I get my validation and self worth as a human being through the loud noises you want to make with your hands and your mouths. So, if you have fun with my tour today, and if you love my terrible puns, make some noise! everybody. Thank you so much for that unsolicited applause. <laughs> On behalf of everybody here at NBC Universal, we do hope you had a great time and we hope you enjoyed the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of LA. And did you love my puns? Here's one more. Hope you all had a terrific time. Uh, bye! <laughs>